We're going to go to Don Don Prager for a question here. Uh, Kraus, this is more directed towards you. You have famously said that we are stardust, that we are, you know, mm -hmm. in your lectures that I've listened to. And I found that when you said, you sat here and you said, the universe doesn't care about you, you kind of made a distinction between us and the universe. I know that there's many people who care about me, who care about you, who care about each other. Why are you making this distinction between ourselves and the universe? There's so many parts of the universe that does actually care about you well, and wants oh. you to be good and, and, and fruitful. Like, why make that distinction? Well, we are part of the universe. We're a part of the universe that is cogn cognizant and has a consciousness. And we create what we, we, we what, what I was trying to argue is there's nothing out, the universe outside of humanity does not care about humanity. It doesn't care about the good of humanity, the propagation of humanity, anything that we, we so we create our own meaning. And so what I try to do is make that separation between the universe beyond humanity of course, humanity is part of the universe, and that was my argument that we're all stardust. We are made of the same elements as everything else, and, and we all have that commonality with not just each other, but with, with the stars. You know, so we are a kind of cosmic whole, but where there's some, where this amazing, remarkable uh, amalgam of elements that have developed by complex systems to be self-aware and create ideas like meaning, but those mi but th that meaning does not have a cosmic significance beyond our own existence. When the earth I is gone and humans are gone, the universe will be essentially the same. And it's not as if the universe was created in any way to th so that we could uh, so that we could be here or that w that we could persist. We're just a, uh, a, mo a moment in the sun, and we should enjoy it. All right, th thank you. We got one last question in the middle here. Yeah, I, I hope this question isn't too complex, but how should humankind approach religion? Should it be approached as a, a bug or a glitch or something we want to root out or should it be approached as a, f a feature, something that can only be hoped to be managed? You can take that one. <clears throat> <laughs> I, I, I really think it depends on what kind of religion you're talking about and what the religion means for, for different individuals. So uh, you know, my view is that all of the religions are false. So as a cognitive claim, I don't think any of the metaphysical or traditional epistemological and value claims justified uh, by religions right, make sense. So. We're trying to figure out the way the world is, how our minds work, what's valuable, what we ought to do with our lives. That has to be a secular, naturalistic, rational process. But that's very complicated. And even though we are very smart creatures, potentially we've been working on this for, for many thousands of years. And I think we should, uh, when we are uh, meeting people who are interested in religion, as quickly as possible make the discussion granular. Don't just uh, see someone who's advocating for religion as a part of a kind of a collective borg of religious belief and that they believe all of that sorts of things because I think most religions are different things for, for different people. And uh, if you are interested in having conversations with other people about religion, the sooner you can find out what is the important value animating that person's interest in religion or commitment to religion and focus the discussion on that, then uh, the discussion is going to be a lot more healthy. Now, it is the case that many people will bring psychological weirdness into their religious questions. And in that case, it is you're dealing with a glitch person, right, so to speak. Uh, in some cases, people are uh, coming up with religious explanations for things and they're not necessarily stupid explanations. They are you know, worth considering explanations. And so I would then say that uh, religion is a feature of uh, r human beings trying to figure out the way the world works in many cases. And in those cases, you'd have to deal with it as a feature. Okay, let me add. I, I actually I have a different way of saying it, but it's actually very similar, I think. I think, I think religion is undoubtedly a bug. It's, it's a, and it's, but the, what we can turn it into a feature. Uh, we, we can ask, what, is, what are the questions, what are the innate human needs that religion addresses? And, um, and, and, and 
uh, and use those and ask how can we address them more effectively. So it's 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 really the way. It's like in, in, in neuroscience, we can sort of only understand consciousness or, or by looking at, the, uh, at, the, uh, at those people who are ill. Or, you know, we can look at what features do schizophrenics have that we don't have so we can try and isolate what, what, what works, okay? And so I think religion is the bu natural bug, this natural desire for purpose in a universe without purpose. But but it addresses things and, ha and it's ubiquitous throughout humanity so we can ask, okay, what, what, what features does it have that we can then more pr productively address? So it's very useful. And as I said, commonality, community, comfort. Can we, can we think of ways that we can, we can try and take what religion appears to provide people that, w that people really need because it's everywhere in every society and can we find more efficient, more effective and more rational ways of providing those same needs and then, then we can use religion as a feature. And I don't think that's that different than what you said really. Well, on that note of agreement, I think, <laughs> um, I thought that this was an incredible discussion here tonight. What did you guys think? Okay. Great. Lawrence Krauss and Stephen Hicks, thank, thank you. you so much. We're going to take a short break here, but then we'll meet you in the lobby. We have posters for you guys to be able to take home a signed poster if you uh, want and just mingle, hang out. This is all about building uh, communities grounded in uh, good faith, helpful intellectual discourse. So uh, feel free to reach out to each other and discuss uh, the event tonight. But thank you so much. This? Yep. Wow. And what is it? Sanjay. How do you spell it? S-A-N-J-Y. S-A-N-J-Y. Oh, really? Some of it. Yeah, I know. It's hard to care about. Uh, getting more. Holy cow. Okay, so this thing seems to be like a... Daotsu and the Temple of Power is now officially available on Amazon. This is the first Pangburn Universe book. It is puzzles, coloring, and philosophy for kids. So we hope you pick up a copy. We are very excited to release our first book.